All right, well, welcome, uh, welcome in, Coach Musselman. Uh, Nate, you want to get us started, please? As far as just for the red white game, just kind of what are you looking for out of them and, and just your, your thoughts on, on uh, playing it again at Barnhill? Yeah, Nate, I mean, we're excited to play in Barnhill. You know, the, it's, it gives us a different environment than um, what we'll play in all season. So I think that's good. Um, you know, we've obviously talked a little bit about the history of that building with our guys, history about who played in that building, the winning tradition in there. Um, and then what we're looking for is, you know, we're looking for different combinations that might work well together, or maybe, <laughs> maybe some combinations that don't work well together. Um, but just still in an evaluation process, um, you know, the teams will be divided up, you know, kind of randomly, uh, no first team against second team, nothing like that. We're still completely into, into the evaluation process with these guys. Is it one where, like, at halftime, you might even switch, switch some guns around? There definitely can be some trades made um, at any point of the game. Thanks. Coach? Coach, I think when we talked to you a couple of weeks ago, y'all were dealing with quite a few injuries. Now, how are y'all doing health-wise? Yeah, Hutch, I mean, we're still a little bit banged up. Um, you know, Jalen Williams is a little bit limited. Um, KK is, is close to being a hundred percent, but still somewhat, uh, limited. Um, you know, Kamani is, is now limited with a wrist. Um, you know, I think they, and then Trey Wade's out, um, you know, with a, with, with not really a timetable, although, you know, when I say that it, it's not going to linger, you know, into much of the regular season, but so that's kind of an injury update. We've had, you know, we've had some physical practices and our guys are, are, are really competing behind closed doors. Curtis. Uh, Hutch, did you have a follow-up? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, coach, you, you said you were also going to kind of adjust how y'all's practices were going to go and change things around. How, how has that gone? Do you feel like you've adjusted well to how your practices are going to go? We have, Hutch. I mean, we went, um, you know, really, really competitive early on. Then we switched to a lot more execution and trying to do a little bit more teaching along with technique stuff. And then the last couple of days we've gotten back just, be, you know, because we do have the red-white scrimmage. We've gotten back to some competitive stuff. Um, and then we'll take, you know, we'll, we'll practice today and tomorrow, and then we'll take off um, Saturday with the football game. I want, you know, I want all of our guys to, to be at the football game. And with an 11 o'clock start, it makes it a little bit problematic to have a practice that day as well. Um, so it'll, it'll give our guys, you know, Saturday to, to refresh their minds and their, and their bodies. And then, and then come back and compete, um, you know, Sunday afternoon. Curtis? Coach, we just got a chance to talk to Aldis, and now that you've had him for a few months, what, what growth have you seen in his game, and what role do you have in this season? Yeah, Aldis, he's done, he's done a great job for us. I mean, he's a, he's a multidimensional player. Curtis, he can play the, you know, the three. If we want to play small ball, he can play the four. If we want him to – you know, if we wanted to play a bigger lineup, he can certainly play the off guard. So he's got great versatility, a high basketball IQ player, can shoot the three, really, really good in transition, um, good finisher around the rim, obviously being left-handed, a little bit unorthodox when people are trying to, you know, to guard him and so forth. Um, should be a really good defender, but I, you know, I do think a lot of this stuff is new for him. I don't know what he said to you guys, but I think that there's a lot of stuff that's that's new to him as well. Maybe the pace of practice, uh, maybe the demand of practice, uh, maybe the execution of learning, you know, three different spots, all those things, you know, maybe, maybe not, but but there is certainly some somewhat of an adjustment for all of our new players um, walking into the system with some guys that, that do have some comfort with it. And then I guess – piggybacking off what you were saying there about the new guys getting acclimated and you have a guy like a, a JD Note who was so good in that six-man role last year 
uh, is that a guy that you consider, you know, maybe starting early as these new guys get acclimated or is it one of those situations where it's, you know, it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I think that with every player at every level, I mean, you could take a major league baseball player, you could take an NBA player, you could take a college um, soccer player. I mean, everybody, you know, when you work in the off season and you have a good year and then you, and then you back it up with having a great summer, I think everybody wants their roles to expand or, I mean, that's just, you know, it's human nature. Um, you know, having said that, I mean, he was in my mind, you know, the best six man in the country, certainly in a league, uh, recognized him in this league's as good as any league in the country. So I don't know why there would be many more guys that came off the bench and had a bigger impact than JD. So I think it puts our coaching staff at ease knowing that a player accepted that role and thrived in that role. Um, but I also think that, you, you know, that you, you, you do need to reward uh, players that have, you know, earned the right to, to be a starter. And, and right now, I mean, he's, you know, he's one of our best players. So, um, you know, still a work in progress and still way too early to determine who's starting and who's not starting. Thank you. Bob. Hey, hey Eric, how you doing? What's up, Bob? Um, Hey, um, you guys playing in Barnhill two years ago. Obviously, we're back, we're back in Walton last year. Uh, what made you decide to go back to Barnhill for the red-white game for the second time in three years? Yeah, I just thought that, you know, the environment was really, really cool. Um, you know, I think that there's, um, you know, a section of, of our fan base that has been in there and remembers it and would like to get back in and see a basketball game in there. And then I think there's another – group of our fans that have never seen a basketball game in there. And, and so they might've heard about it through a grandparent or a parent. And um, so I think that makes it cool and unique. And, you know, look, we're, we still got, you know, we still have two exhibition games that'll be played um, in Bud Walton. So we're going to get, you know, 80 minutes of play where we're familiar with the surroundings. I think it's, you know, been well documented that, you know, the two years I've been here that we don't practice much in Bud Walton. Um, we have a beautiful practice site. I want to use all the baskets over here um, in our in our performance at Eddie Sutton Performance Center. So I don't think that we're missing, you know, the lighting or any of that stuff. I mean, it's it's uh, it is what it is. I think it's a great environment for us to play in a unique place that we'll only be able to do one time you know, over the, over the next 12 months. So I, I think it's, it's good um, for our guys to play, you know, in, with a different background as well than what we'll do all year. Yeah, Mike said you guys will probably announce your exhibition games maybe shortly after this, but um, I know whoever you're playing, you're going to crush them if, if you want to, but um, how important is it with so many newcomers, how important are those exhibition games? Are they a little more important now than maybe they would have been, you know, 10 years ago or something? I, mean, I think there's there. I mean, our guys are going to see, you know, not now, but in a couple of weeks, all the upsets that have happened in, in exhibition games and um, a lot of close games as well. I mean, there's certainly a lot of that aren't close, but um, we're going to, you know, our belief um, is that secret scrimmages, because uh, you have an option to do secret scrimmage, play other division one schools, um, you know, or to, to do exhibition against division uh, two school or do an exhibition and, and raise funds uh, for natural disaster type things. And so, um, you know, for us, I don't really like the secret scrimmage. Um, I did it at Nevada and they were basically worthless because then when, the, when we played in a real game, that was the first time we had been in uniform. You do the secret scrimmages with no fans they might do segments of base. It's not even a, it's a, it's a useless environment, in my opinion. Um, and actually, I thought it hurt our teams at Nevada. And when I was an assistant coach at other programs, I thought the secret scrimmages didn't help. They hurt. Again, that's just one person's opinion because they're really popular with other coaches. But I, I like our guys to play in front of fans and be in a, in a, in a game-like environment. Um, to get them ready, you know, for, for the regular season. And I agree. Cause that way we, we can cover them. Um, you, you know, you got a lot of players that have played a lot of games in, in big arenas. I'm sorry. I would have let you guys cover 
a secret scrimmage, although the NCAA wouldn't allow it. But, you know, as, yeah. as far as we were, you guys could have come in. Okay. Well, I'll keep that in mind. But, um, you know, you have a lot of older guys that have played a lot of games and, you know, the ACC or uh, different leagues. But um, how excited do you think some of these older guys are, um, like maybe DC or, or Chris Likes or whoever, because this is going to be their first experience playing in front of the Arkansas fans as, as Razorbacks. No, I, I, I'll tell you, Bob, I think it's, it's a group that's excited. I think we do have some guys that have played in some big environments, but I also think that um, not necessarily Sunday, but I, I think opening night, you know, I think there'll be some angst with some guys. I really do. I think that, um, you know, there'll be some, some, some nervous energy for, for a lot of the new guys. And, and sometimes that's good. And, and sometimes you got to temper it, but I think that, you know, the red white game prepares us a little bit. We'll do a, a game like day, meaning, you know, we'll do a walkthrough earlier in the day. We'll have a, a meal together. Um, it'll be, you know, a little closer in time proximity than a normal day because of a two o'clock start. But I think it's good for all of our guys. The guys you mentioned that Andrew asked you about, they're still low banged up. Are all those guys going to miss the game, I assume, like Kamani and – KK and uh, Wade, obviously, and, and J is Jalen going to be able to play? Jalen Williams? I think Mus is frozen. <laughs> Great question. You got me back? Yeah, we, we got you. Looks like, yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure, but I don't know where you lost me, Bob. I'm not really sure, what, you know, who exactly will play and who won't play at, at this time. Um, Kamani's practiced, you know, every day, and today he's going to be held out. So I don't know what, you know. And then we also have the off day on Saturday, um, you know, for guys to heal up a little bit as well. Trey Wade will not play uh, for, for sure. Hopeful that, that – um, Jalen Williams will play a little bit. Um, I'll probably limit his time as much as the training staff will. And then, um, you know, KK, you know, we would expect to be in uniform as well. I guess it's Trey Wade out, Kamani game, game day decision. Okay, I might have a couple more, but I'll turn it back to Mike because I'm sure there's other people, of course. Dudley? When I talk to high school kids and, and the kids you've got out of the portal, they talk a lot about how – specific you are about how they would play in your system and using analytics and all that. Talk about that factor in recruiting and how it seems to, to really, you know, play with kids. Yeah, Dudley, I think that, you know, what everything that we do here, we try to, you know, emulate the best and the best is the NBA. Um, you know, a, a big role that, that Clay Mosier has is, is he ran the analytics department for the LA Lakers. So, when you can have someone on staff that, that ran an analytics department and was in charge of it for an NBA team and then an NBA team like the Lakers organization. And then Hayes Myers uh, did a lot of analytics for us at, at Nevada. Uh, my son, Michael, does a lot of analytics. Coach Ruda does analytics. And we have all these different formulas and different ideas that we kind of bring to the table from an analytics standpoint. Um, you know, Mike Economist, same thing. He's, he's a guy that, um, you know, was with us at Nevada, Texas A&M, came back. He, he adds another dimension to, to the analytics. But, you know, we use it with our current players. We use it in recruiting. Um, and it's just a big part of what we believe in. The game's evolved from an analytics standpoint. And um, I've tried to study it myself, whether it's through articles, whether it's trying to pick somebody's brain like Billy Bean. I think that, you know, you've got to grow with the game and analytics is, has become a huge part of the pro game and it's slowly but surely making its way to the collegiate game. You, you mentioned analytics. Uh, obviously, the, what ha has been other factors that's allowed y'all to have so much success with top 100 kids and things like that? I'm not, you know, I think that, you know, the one thing Dudley is, is just trying to develop a relationship is, is really, you know, important with whether you're talking about, you know, recruiting a, a, a transfer or recruiting, um, you know, high school players, it's, it's, uh, it's relationships. And, 
you know, a lot of, a lot of programs, you know, have assistant coaches in charge of, you know, a certain player. Um, you know, I think it's my job to take the lead on all recruiting. Um, and that's, you know, it's time consuming last night from the time I got in the car until about nine 45, you know, I had very limited conversation with, with my wife or, or my daughter, Mariah, but that comes with the job and, and recruiting's 24 hours, seven days a week. And, um, you know, I think it always comes back to relationships and then it always comes back to, you know, other factors, style of play, you know, what your program can provide, what happens when a player's done what's his next step in his career and life look like. So I think there's a bunch of things, Dudley, that come into play. Awesome yeah. background too, by the way, Dudley. Appreciate it. Scotty. Hey coach, I'm curious what's jumped out to you about Jackson and you know, what kind of a role you might envision for him, you know, if he continues to, to grow. Yes, yeah, Scotty, he keeps getting better. I mean, he, uh, you know, like he sh really truthfully should be an incoming freshman. He obviously reclassified up. Um, a guy that we had great belief in when he was, you know, coming out of high school. Um, really, really, really good shooter. Uh, you know, continues to evolve defensively, but he's got good length. He can rebound the ball for his position. Uh, he's no maintenance to coach. I mean, we've all really, really enjoyed coaching Jackson. He's, a, he, he's trying to learn. He's bought in with two feet. Um, I mean, he's a guy that can stretch the floor out for us, Scotty, and he can play three positions. So I think because he's, and he's learned our offense and done a good job of, of, of knowing three different spots because he's, question any questions kevin yeah go ahead hey Mus. i got a couple here you talked a little about some of the reasons why you chose barnhill and wanted to get back in there but that the first time was your first taste of the Razorback fan base. Since that, you got the Little Rock, the Central Arkansas game, games in, in Bud Walton, Kentucky comes to mind where you really got the full hammer on the fan base. Last year, you missed it. How excited are you? How much is this going to play into what's on your mind going into this season with a lot of high expectations for this team and, and the basically the support you're getting from the fan base? Yeah, I mean, the fans have been, you know, incredible from the first time you know, we step foot on campus and they continue to, to be awesome. Um, you know, we're, I think we're under, you know, a hundred tickets or whatever left um, to sell out the building, which is, I mean, insane to think that we're in a 20,000 seat building and, and, and could be looking at a sellout. It's not, you know, most people sell a lot of their tickets from the second week of October, you know, to the, to the first game. And, and, um, you know, we're quickly hitting a spot where we could be sold out before we even get to November one. So it's been awesome. I mean, we got, we got great fan support. And I know our, our new players are really looking forward uh, to their first fan experience on Sunday. And then obviously the two exhibitions. And then once we get to our first game against Mercer. All right. My second question is about the Pro Hog. Some of these guys played for you. Have you been able to keep an eye on Isaiah Joe, Moses Moody, and maybe some guys that can help embrace your program like Bobby Portis and Daniel Gafford? And what? And, and based on what you've seen out of their play, how are you able to use that in recruiting when you talk to prospects? Yeah, Kevin, I think for sure, um, you know, obviously Bobby's, you know, run to win a championship was, 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 was incredible to watch. You know, our staff, I mean, we didn't coach him, but we certainly feel like, you know, he's part of the family or we're part of the, his family, however you want to word it. 
Um, and, you know, it was great to have him at a football game. Um, you know, Daniel continues to play well. He continues to improve. Um, you know, both guys that, that, that played for Coach Anderson, and he did a great job developing both of those guys. And, um, you know, obviously Isaiah, watching him a ton. Um, you know, if I'm not watching live on, my, on the NBA packet, um, then I'll tape it and watch it at a later time. Same thing with Moses. Um, I, th I think I've watched every second of both of those guys so far uh, through exhibition and take great pride in that. And then, you know, just waiting on Mason's next step, whether it's a sign in a two day or potentially playing for a Euro league team. I talked to Mason last night about his next step and what'll happen. And um, Jimmy Witt is going to end up, you know, getting a, a G league tryout. Um, he just got, got his deal solidified or is in the process of finalizing that uh, to get a, to get a G league tryout. So, uh, just, you know, great pride in, in, in all the guys, whether we coached them or not. Um, and I think you've got to use it in recruiting. I mean, there's, there's a lot of success stories out there with former Razorback players. Okay. Is it breakfast burritos and Reese's for the kids this weekend or one or the other? You know what, Kevin, I'm glad you brought up Reese's. So Reese's is actually sponsoring, okay, the red white game. So not often you get a sponsor for a uh, red white game. I, I brought these in. Unfortunately, Mike Kaywood decided that we were going to do this on zoom. Otherwise I was going to pass all these out to you guys individually. Each media member was going to get three, but um, due to Mike, maybe I'll save them for you guys and pass them out on Sunday to everybody around 1:45. Look at Bob. Bob, I know that's why you got up, went into your kitchen. That's I saw right. you in the chair. I got you. Know, th these are sugar free, so you could pass these out to the kids and, and help their their uh, their teeth won't decay as much. <laughs> mine's not mine's not uh, sugar free. Hey, Scotty, I went. Um, my computer froze. Did I answer all your questions? I don't know where I cut off when you had asked about Jackson Robinson. Yeah, you were on a good roll about Jackson. I was just wondering if you could maybe continue that that thought that you had. I don't know where you guys lost me, but obviously his ability to play three positions, uh, his shooting, stretching the floor, uh, create space for our dribble drivers, um, you know, evolving as a defender. Uh, but with his length, you know, he can cover a lot of ground on closeouts. And and a guy that, that um, continues to get better and probably a guy that, has moved up in our rotation as, as we've gone along throughout our training camp. Okay, coach, appreciate your time. I know you got to get down to the practice floor. Thanks, guys, and uh, be looking for that uh, release on the exhibition dates. Thanks. See everybody at the football game, man.